Allah described for a pretty extensive period in Surah Al-A'raf how Musa alayhi salam confronted Fir'aun. And this is the end of that confrontation. We all know Fir'aun has drowned and the people that were weak have been given power. Banu Israel have been given power. They've been able to cross the water and they have survived. These were the people that were with Musa alayhi salam when they saw this ayat in bayyinat. Allah says nine clear signs, miracles. Those miracles did not happen in one day. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَخَذْنَا أَلَى فِرْعَوْنَ بِالسِّنِينَ Allah held the people of Pharaoh hostage for multiple years. So these were people that saw the power of Allah in miraculous signs multiple times over and over again under the leadership of Musa alayhi salam. And when the miracles would become overpowering, so for example, Allah would send them a disease. You could have the strongest army in the world. What are you going to do when there's a disease? You could have the best castles, best military, best equipment, best infrastructure. What are you going to do when a tornado comes and rips through your buildings? These things were paralyzing Egypt or paralyzing that superpower because a superpower is only a superpower if it has economic prosperity, if it has economic power. These miracles were destroying the economy of Egypt. And Banu Israel who had no money, no power, no military, no media, no resources, they saw the world's greatest superpower brought on its knees just by the miracles sent by Allah Azza wa Jalla. And the mightiest army in the world couldn't kill one man, couldn't kill Musa alayhi who's living among them, challenging them to their face. So they saw that when Allah decides to protect someone, no one can harm them. And when Allah decides to destroy someone and weaken someone, it doesn't matter how strong they are. And then when they saw that there's water in front of them and there's nowhere to escape, and in that moment of absolute death, they saw Allah create life. They saw the water part, they saw a way out for them. And the same way that was life for them was the same way that becomes death for Fir'aun. Okay, all of that has happened. But I want to talk to you about ayah number 138. What happened to these followers of Musa alayhi salam? So these are the Muslims of that time. These Muslims have now crossed the water. Allah says, وَجَاوَزْنَا بِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ الْبَحْرِ We had the children of Israel cross over the water. And they came to a village. They came to a new town. They've never met these people before and they noticed something about them. They sit and they meditate in front of statues. And so they saw this and they said, ya Musa, aliha. Could you make us a god like they have? Islam, of course it's true, but times have changed and we're in a different place now. So, you know, it's not like there shouldn't be any ijtihad. There should be some updates. So I think this is a pretty good suggestion. Musa, we should learn from the new culture and we should update the teachings of our religion and we should take some of the good things that these people are doing and improve our religious practice. Because after all, if you have a statue, it's a lot easier to concentrate. It's a lot easier to visualize. If I'm ever forgetting Allah, then I can just remember the statue. It's much easier to imagine. I can't imagine Allah. Mentally, it's going to be easier. Visually, it's going to be easier. We'll fit in this culture a lot better. They have their temple, we have our Muslim temple, it's gonna look a lot like theirs. So we could just take some of that stuff and it'll be a good thing. And I hope as I'm describing this to you, some of this sounds familiar. There will always be a population of Muslims who doesn't matter how much truth becomes clear to them. To them, the religion is actually not about following the truth. To them, the religion is about being culturally acceptable. They see other cultures as superior, they're better, they're more advanced in some way, and we should be more like them, we're too backwards. Alhamdulillah, we're living in 2024, we're not impressed by temples, but we have different idols, we have different statues. These were the statues of that time. We have to understand what the statues are of our time. And that was the worship of that time. People used to sit in front of these idols. They used to put their hopes in these idols. They used to think these idols are all powerful. They represent perfection. They represent protection. So what is it that people put their hopes and aspirations in our time? There are new idols. And those idols are things like philosophies and ideas. Like what's so wrong with LGBT? What's so wrong with that? I mean, they're human too. What's wrong with homosexuality? There's nothing wrong with it. Why can't Islam be more tolerant? Maybe we should reinterpret some things in our religion to make it more acceptable and more tolerant because how am I going to answer these questions when I go to university campus? So we should update our religion a little bit. Muslims find ourselves in a strange situation now where they're saying things like, well, you know, my kids want a Christmas tree in Christmas. I mean, we're not worshipping Jesus or anything, but what's wrong with a tree? We could just do dhikr around the tree. Really? Yeah, yeah, just a small update. It's not a big deal. These idols are so beautiful. I just mold my Islam a little bit and fall in front of these idols. This is a lie we tell ourselves. 
And where did that lie come from? Musa alayhi salam diagnosed it. When he heard this nonsense from them, after knowing so much about Allah and seeing Allah's miracles, you can dare to say something like that. And that too to Allah's Prophet, to Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam said, Qala innakum qawmun tajhalun. You are a people that have no control over your feelings. You are impulsive people. You are run entirely by your emotions. Jahal in Arabic doesn't just mean ignorance. It's to not be able to control your feelings. If you're angry, your anger is out of control. You're jahil. If you think you're funny and you're making jokes and then you start making all kinds of obscene jokes, you don't care who's hurt or how inappropriate it is, you're being jahil. You're not putting brakes on yourself. And the idea that Musa is actually diagnosing in them is that these people, actually what they worship is their feelings. It feels good, so I'll do it. It feels like this will make me more acceptable, so I'll do it. The religion is a religion of feelings. Oh, I don't practice this religion because I don't feel as good in this. I went to the church the other day, they had a concert, it felt so good. So I go there instead. Feels. These people, Musa salam said, it is utterly destroyed. Whatever they are drowned in, whatever behavior they're engaged in, is meant to be destroyed. It's already destroyed. مُتَبَّرٌ مَا فِيهِ وَبَاطِلٌ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ What they've been doing has no basis in reality. This is entirely made up. If you are going to follow the religion because of how it feels, and that's the religion for you. But if you're going to follow a religion because it's based on something, it's based on a truth, it has haqq at the core, at the roots of it, then what these people are offering is nothing more than empty feeling. بَاطِلٌ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Nothingness is all they're doing. The absence of reality, the absence of existence is actually batil also. قَالَ أَغَيْرَ اللَّهِ أَبْغِيكُمْ إِلَاهًا وَهُوَ فَضَّلَكُمْ عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ وَإِذْ أَنْجَيْنَاكُمْ مِنْ أَلِي فِرْعَوْنِ يَسُومُونَكُمْ سُوءَ الْعَذَابِ يُقَتِّلُونَ أَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَيَسْتَحْيُونَ نِسَاءَكُمْ وَفِي ذَلِكُمْ بَلَاءٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ عَظِيمٌ Look at the words of Musa alayhi salam and followed immediately by the words of Allah directly. Musa alayhi salam says, I should find you another God other than Allah. After he gave you so much favor over all the other nations in the world, he gave you favor. He let you overpower the most powerful superpower on earth. He gave you that in front of your own eyes. It wasn't even generations ago. It was in your own lifetime. And I should find you a different God? And then Allah Himself intervenes and says, How could you say this when we're the ones who rescued you from the people of Fir'aun? They were humiliating you. They were torturing you in the worst ways. They were slaughtering your children. They were letting your women live. Allah rescuing you from all of that was such a huge blessing for you. And in all of those trials was such a huge difficult test for you. Allah allowed you to get out of all of that test and this is what you turn into. Muslims of today, we have to think about some things. In these set of ayat, Allah has taught us to not forget our history and to be grateful for the ways Allah has rescued us. Some of you have grandparents that are alive right now that remember. They remember going to the masajid, begging Allah, Ya Allah, give us an opportunity to raise our children on Islam. And then you go a couple of generations later and their grandkids want to have their wedding that looks more like a Hindu wedding than a Muslim wedding. And you go a couple of generations later and they want to celebrate, they want to idolize idol worship and idol worshipers like their celebrities and their icons. This is just a couple of generations later. It's not even centuries later. And it reminds me of what happened with Musa salam when Allah allowed them to cross the water. May Allah Azza wa make us grateful for the favor that He's given us. Inna akramakum عند الله atqakum. The most noble among you are the ones that have the most taqwa. 